All right. Good morning, everyone. Shall we start? Um, okay. Well, um, once again, good morning. Uh, you're joining our pre-departure orientation session. Canada College International students, welcome. Um, hola, namaste, ni hama, anyazeo, salam alaikum, good morning, welcome. This is our fall 2023 pre-departure orientation session. My name is Amr Tayyip, and I have the pleasure of offering a few words at the outset of today's orientation session to introduce our presenters and the topics of today's session. We have a fulsome and comprehensive pre-departure orientation prepared for you today. We hope that through this comprehensive session, you will be well prepared to arrive safely in Canada, register for your classes, understand what our local community is all about, and give and receive communication with your college effectively. Please remember that this session is designed to be the bridge between your travel to Canada and the comprehensive orientation activities designed for you once you arrive physically in Canada and in North Bay. In fact, the fall 2023 in-person orientation is already confirmed for August 31st, 2023. Our presentation today is structured in four key sections using a deliberately designed funnel approach. The idea here is to introduce you to Canada and the local community of North Bay in section one. This will be undertaken by my colleague, Leanne Bedioff. Following this, we have Arlen Sharuba, who will introduce you to the main communication channels for international students at Canada College. This is important because getting and receiving the right information is crucial for your success at Canada. Following this, and in preparation for your travel to Canada, we have Sonia Tucker, who will touch on matters that will help to ensure the smoothest possible trip for you to Canada. Now, living in Canada and North Bay is also something you will need to adapt to when you arrive. This is why Seneda Serrano Vergara will be sharing with you many useful tips and best practices to making your stay in this country a little bit easier. Finally, our content concludes with the elements that you can expect to be relative to you, uh, most germane to you concerning registration. There are many helpful pieces in section six that Sonia will share with you that can serve to reduce stress and anxiety later down the line. Sunny, perhaps we can move to the slide with all of our different uh, sections identified, thank you. Now, we have a fun and engaging activity at the end organized by my colleague Seni. Please stay tuned till the very end for this fun activity, one that you certainly don't want to miss. An overview of our pre-departure session is uh, presented to you here on, on this slide. With this, I will turn to our first presenter, Leanne Bedial, to kick off our session with an introduction to Candor College and the city of North Bay and Barry Sound. Leanne, over to you. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the session today. Good morning, everybody. We are so happy you are joining us today. We see a large number of participants, which is very encouraging. Um, so I'm here today to speak to you a little bit about our community of North Bay and actually, of course, uh, introduction to Canada. So on this slide here, you will see that North Bay is located um, basically central to Ottawa and Toronto. So North Bay is a community of approximately 52,000 and we are located approximately three and a half hours north of the greater Toronto area, as well as about four hours from our capital of Ottawa. The population of Canada, just a quick overview is 34 million. We have 10 provinces and three territories and, and this is our location within Ontario. A little bit about the city of North Bay. I am proud to say that I am from North Bay, born and raised. I've never left North Bay. And so I'm. Uh, for me, it's quite easy to be able to speak about this beautiful city. Once you arrive to North Bay, 
one of the few a few of key factors that you will see is um, how beautiful our city is. We are located, um, we are surrounded by lakes, freshwater lakes. We also have the four seasons. So when you arrive here in North Bay, you will arrive at approximately in, in a couple of months in August. So we will still have <clears throat> we will still have summer here. We'll have hot weather. But when you arrive here and when you attend our orientation session on August 31st, we will provide you with additional um, tools, tips on how to prepare for the fall and winter months. So there's no need to worry about bringing any of that, um, any winter clothing while you're traveling. This can be done once you arrive. So not to stress, we'll be able to guide you there. Also, what you'll find is the, the number of activities that you can experience here. I'm just gonna move this slide here. Um, so, so North Bay, as you can see, um, we have um, so many things to offer for activities for mental health. We have right here at our main campus, we have trails um, that students can walk through. Um, and in that throughout the trails, the um, you will also see the Duchenne Falls. And so again, we're surrounded by water, great for the mind, um, great for the soul while you're here studying. Also, um, in the winter, if you've never experienced winter, you'll get to see and feel snow. And so we'll be able to talk about that more in, in August. But things to look forward to is the way we look at it. Just to give you an idea of where we are, um, North Bay. So a number of you may have family located, let's say, in the greater Toronto area. And that is, as I mentioned earlier, is about three and a half hours south of North Bay. And this just gives you a quick overview of um, how far, let's say, Ottawa is, Montreal, Hamilton, Subray, which is our neighbor. Um, so just to, to give you a quick overview there. I mentioned seasons. Actually, I'm going to touch a little bit on this because a number of you are wondering what this is. This is called an ice shack. An ice shack, uh, hopefully you'll get to experience that this, this winter, is basically... Um, a little cabin that is um, put on a frozen lake. So this lake here becomes frozen and you get to ice fish on this. Um, so again, we'll touch on that uh, come August uh, 31st. The fall is beautiful. You will see the change of season, the leaves, um, the real Canadian uh, way. We also have directly in our city, we have uh, a hill, a ski hill. And so if you've never have experienced uh, downhill skiing, or snowboarding, there's an option as well. Just a few pictures here to show you that, yes, we do experience all four seasons here in North Bay, the fall, winter, um, and of course, uh, spring and summer. Just to give you an idea of the climate. Um, so right now, North Bay, where we are here, it's very, very hot. So we are experiencing full fledged summer, Summer uh, temperatures, um, we're just coming out of very hot uh, temperatures that you might be accustomed to. Um, that's gonna cool off um, throughout, so your body will adjust as the seasons uh, change. This, I will not um, talk too much about this, but we will talk about this again. We keep talking about winter, but we don't want you to have to worry about preparing for winter while you're preparing to travel. This can be done while you're here in North Bay. And we'll we'll set you up with the resources. We'll provide you some guidance on where to go. Um, so we'll we'll touch on that again. Okay, so um, Sunny, I believe uh, about Canador. Um, actually, I didn't speak about Perry Sound. I'd like some of you may be attending our Perry Sound campus. Our Perry Sound campus is located about two hours north of Toronto. And it's a smaller campus right here. And we offer a couple of programs, uh, nursing, practical nursing and healthcare administration. And we're looking to expand more. And so the community of West Perry Sound is quite similar to North Bay in terms of um, the four seasons, uh, what to do and those kind of things. So um, if you have any further questions about that, we're, help we're happy to support. Um, so just get in touch with us. Now you'll see here while I'm, I'm on this slide, um, our main campus is situated, you'll see right here, we have a pond right here where we are. 
our Commerce Core campus basically um, is where our trades and uh, technology programs are located. And our aviation campus is a standalone campus located uh, directly beside our North Bay Airport. And I just mentioned West Perry Sound. Now, some of you may be attending our GTA campus. That's the Greater Toronto Area campuses. So that's Canada at Stanford. We have three campuses there, one in Scarborough, one in Mississauga, and one in Brampton. Um, so I'll pass it over to you, Sunny, I believe, with Student Services. Yeah, mute. Oh, there are two more slides, uh, Leanne and oh, then Carlene. Sure. Yes. You. Okay. So the student services on campus. So you will know that all of our campuses, no matter where you attend, will have all of the support services that you need, whether it be a uh, main campus, uh, commerce support, or aviation. So we do have a full-fledged cafeteria with lots of food options uh, to meet the needs of each individual student. Um, we also have... Um, a gym in all of our campuses and we have our student lounge so we have a number of them uh, within our main campus our largest one but with every campus you will find student lounges and directly here you will see a beautiful library that is shared with Nipissing University and this is a great option for when you're doing um, some some homework or do it working on projects um, it's very quiet lo lots of space there that you can book Okay. Okay, and as Amr, our director, mentioned this uh, at the beginning of this presentation, uh, we really want you to focus on this day. So please mark down in your calendars, um, August thirty first, twenty twenty three. We will be um, hosting a wonderful orientation session for our new international students, and part of that will be uh, to provide an overview of a number of things that we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and so please, this is considered a mandatory training session. So we encourage you um, to be well-prepared. Oh, thank you. Well-prepared and um, we, it will be uh, something that will help every student to be successful in their studies. And so again, I just wanna say um, thank you for joining us today. We really look forward to welcoming all of you on August 31st at 9 a.m. here at the main campus. Thank you, Sunny. Hello, everyone. My name is Carolyn Sheruba, and I am the um, office assistant. So I would like to talk about um, communication-related matters, like what information you can trust. So it is very easy to be misled and uh, there are many things uh, like many other uh, websites or WhatsApp groups, non-official WhatsApp groups and Facebook pages that can give information and it is very easy to be misled. But today I would like to talk about where to find the right information and whom to contact. So we have our uh, Canada International Microsite on the Canada website. And then we also have our frequently asked questions and we also have the ISINT app, so which I'll be talking about shortly. Um, so what are the best practices that we suggest? It's that, um, as I said, the FAQs, the frequently asked questions and the ISINT app, the students are requested to check regularly as all the updates are posted there. And it is a very fastest way to get your answers because pretty much all of the information will be provided both in the ISINT app and in the uh, frequently asked questions. And uh, what uh, the information shared by the admissions office or the international department from the Canada college are considered to be final. And uh, whichever you, you can contact, I know most of you all have uh, agents and you contact through consultants, but all of whatever the agents or the consultants say, um, it should be verified because sometimes they can also be misleading. And uh, again, word of mouth or from uh, unofficial WhatsApp pages or WhatsApp groups and Facebook pages can be misleading. Instagram accounts can be misleading. So we request you all to look for the right information. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to um, international at canadorcollege.ca 
which is the website, which is our email address, and you will be responded within 10 um, business days. And how can you communicate with us? As I said, International Microsite. So when you go into Canador College, and you can see, as you can see here, Canador, when you go into the Canador website, you can see this page. And if you go on to um, get started, sorry. So if you see, see here, if you can see get started, if you click on this, you will be seeing this page. And as you keep scrolling down, you can see this international students. And when we click on this, we can see this page. So in this, you can see about the international students and about relations, the FAQs and many other things. So if you have, you see the FAQ, if you can click on that, it will lead you um, to the page. A tape, you can see all the frequently asked questions here. And in this page, you can have a lot of questions that are answered for students on the basic things regarding how to defer or um, how what are the documents to carry and um, do I need to quarantine or when is the last day to defer? What about refund? And all the other policies are there mentioned in this page. And if you want to contact any of the admissions department or anybody else, you have another option here called the About Us. If you click on that, you can see this. And you, you can know, if you click on this link, you can see for what uh, for what concern, whom to be reached out. It has the email addresses or the phone numbers and the extensions which you can contact. Apart from that, we have the ISINT app, which is the Canada International Student app. So through this, all the vital and important informations will be sent directly to students. Um, you can check on the, you can, uh, so if the students, who are, can, everybody who all can view the screen, I request everybody to scan and you can all can download this app and have it on your phones because this is very essential. All the information about whatever is happening in the college and within, and also for any, any new changes in the like, uh, IRCC regulations or about part-time work, employment, and every other thing is met, is there in this app. And I request all of the international students to be active using this app. And uh, I'm just giving you maybe another 30 seconds so anybody can uh, take a screen, uh, they can uh, scan this QR code and get download this app. All right, I'm gonna move. So once you um. So um, once we uh, you download the app, I request all the students not to turn off the notifications, but to turn on the notifications. So you get all the notifications like this or all the events that is happening will be seen in the app. And apart from that, the student can also book a virtual appointment with the student advisors. So, um, so when you uh, open the app, you can see over here the advisor appointment. And if when you click on that, if you would want it online or in person, so I, if you if you want a virtual booking, go online, and then you can see related to what concern you can talk to whom. And then when you click on this, you can get a, you can book an appointment with the student advisor, and you can contact. So this is one of the ways you can connect, and you can get your information that is needed. So if you have any other questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to international office by international at canadorcollege.ca and we will get back to you as early as possible, but it might take up to 10 business days for your response. And now I would like to hand over the next session to my colleague Sonia, who has very valid and very important information she has to share. Have everybody all the best and we are all waiting and excited to see you soon. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, the session today. My colleagues have shared wonderful information so far, and I'll be uh, covering travel related matters. I am sure you all have access to social media, and there's too much content on YouTube about what you should do while traveling to Canada because, uh, because of the increase in immigrants and students to Canada. 
However, we are trying our best to give concise information in this session as to uh, what you should do before coming to Canada. So we'll be talking about accommodation. We'll be talking about uh, traveling from uh, Toronto to North Bay. Uh, we'll be mentioning something about how you should kind of find jobs and how is the market in Canada. Um, a few suggestions that you should read about Canadian culture because you know, a lot of students have already applied for study visa and you have that time. So, you know, invest that time in yourself and read about Canada, read about the culture in Canada, learn some basic cooking because uh, we have all, you know, from our home countries have been pampered, especially um, in, you know, South Asian region. We are all pampered by our families wherein we don't have to cook. But once you kind of uh, study in Canada, you become independent. So all these things will be covered in this session and also uh, focus on downloading the ISINT app, which has been uh, mentioned by my colleague, Carolyn, as well. Uh, so let's move uh, to the session ahead. Um, we kind of tell all the students that carrying all the important documents is very essential. And you should carry all these important documents in your handbag or carry on bag. Uh, never ever kind of put all your documents in the checked in luggage. Uh, if you do not understand the difference, the checked in luggage is the one that you give to the airline to be given to you when you arrive in the country and carry on baggage is the baggage that you carry with you in the airplane. So a file of all the documents which starts from your letter of acceptance, which is also called offer letter. Uh, Canada's offer letter is a three page document. We, we have had students in the past uh, who were carrying two pages of your offer letter. We don't issue two pages of a letter. Our offer letter always has three pages. Make sure you have that in your file. Along with that, you should also carry all your educational documents. You should carry um, not just the originals. You should be carrying soft copies of the documents as well. Um, from my past experience of dealing with students, I've had cases of students who have sometimes misplaced their documents. It's very essential that you carry photocopies of these documents with you in one single file that only you have access to. When we suggest about booking flights, um, there are students who you know, in excitement would book flights before getting their study visa acceptance. And we always suggest students to not do that um, because it will unnecessarily increase your cost. The flight tickets are anyway on a higher side post COVID. And hence uh, you should not kind of add to your expenditure by booking the flights before getting study visa. It is all, always essential that you book only after being sure of getting your PPR. Um, there's also something important that you check with your airline. There are different airlines with different baggage allowance. Mostly it's 23 kgs, two bags, which is 46 kgs. However, some airlines don't allow two bags. They, they charge $100 for one extra bag. So please read the document of baggage allowance of the airline that you are using. It's essential. There are certain airlines who allow one free bag to the students, for example, British Airways, uh, which came to my mind. So you always kind of check which suits you better and make sure that your bag is within the limit. It is also very essential that you, you should know that the insurance that you pay for your insurance and the tuition that you pay to the institution. However, if you have any specific medical conditions that might not be covered in the insurance and you must have a supplement to medical insurance with you. Um, I don't know if I should mention that example or not, but it, it had created issues. There were female students who would get pregnant in Canada 
and that might not be covered in your uh, insurance covered cover by the college and it's very expensive if you do not have insurance to deliver a child in Canada. So please be prepared of these cases. There were students who had issues uh, like diabetes and all. Please make sure that you are aware of your health conditions and accordingly you're prepared with your medical insurance. Um, the insurance covered by the college usually starts from 1st of uh, September. The cover, the insurance cover starts usually from 1st of September. For students who are coming from SDS countries, you have something called as GIC certificate. You must uh, carry the documents related to it. For students who are coming from non-SDS countries, you must have documents to show your financial proof, which you might have already done in your study visa filing. But it's always kind of uh, you know good to be prepared as far as your documents are concerned. And uh, for students uh, who have family or who have children, uh, just to let you know that you can also let your family apply uh, when you apply for your study visa. Uh, Canada is very supportive uh, as far as uh, your family and your children's visa is concerned if you're studying in Canada. Um, as I had mentioned uh, about carry-on bag, the one that you uh, can carry with you in the airplane, uh, as I mentioned, that document file should be there. Uh, you should carry a little bit of medications of the issues that you know about, but rest of the medications along with the prescription should go in the checked-in baggage. Um, there are, uh, you know, the prescription is very important because in Canada, you don't get medicines without prescription. If you're getting it from your home country, prescription is necessary. Never keep your power bank in the checked-in baggage. It should be in your carry-on uh, luggage. And uh, you're suggested not to carry in liquid bottles. Um, this information is actually available uh, on the airline. You are kind of traveling, but it's essential that you notice and you know make sure that you understand this information during this session also and keep it in your mind. Um, there's, there are always questions by students and a lot of confusion of what we should carry and what we should not carry. Uh, Canada is a multicultural country and everything is available in Canada. Uh, you don't have to worry about bringing a lot of stuff from your home country uh, just because you might be confused whether you will get it in Canada or not. Believe me, everything is available. Um, in past, I have seen students carrying pickles. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, risk that it might kind of uh, get leaked in your baggage. It can also spoil your clothes. So please do not bring all this. Pickles are available in Canada. Okay, there are uh, students, um, especially in Southeast Asia and South Asia who like uh, spicy food, okay? So chilies are also available in Canada. So make sure that you don't carry things which are available in Canada. On that note, I want to say that just for initial few days before you get settled in Canada, before you know from where you can get all this stuff, make sure that you have things, simple things like a perfume or a deodorant, it's essential, it's a hygienic thing. Um, you should have a little bit of stationery with you to do all the important works as far as pens, staplers are concerned. Um, you don't have to carry too many clothes, especially the winter clothes, because your home country winter clothes might not work in Canada. You get a lot of very good jackets and clothes in Canada, so it is suggested that you buy it from Canada. One thing that I really want to mention to students um, who know cooking and would actually start cooking in Canada, uh, there's one thing that uh, majority of uh, South Asian students have seen that they carry to Canada, which is a pressure cooker. And um, if something that you're very interested in cooking, you must carry that if you want to cook yourself because it's a bit expensive. 
to me uh, if I look at the rates. And also um, you can get better quality in your home country. That's only one thing. Otherwise you get every everything in Canada. It's a great country. Um, also, apart from all these things, what you should pack, what you should not pack, um, I just want to mention that you must have a lot of confidence. Uh, you should not shy away from asking questions if you don't know, because people are very friendly in Canada. They're very supportive and they will actually help you uh, with whatever questions you might have. So always stay alert and be confident. Um, I also want to mention uh, when you arrive at the airport in Toronto, which is the Pearson International Airport, there are options of a flight uh, to Jack Garland Airport, which is in North Bay. And we have also given the link uh, in the presentation, if you can see, which is Ontario Northland. You can book this in advance of coming to Canada. And the, this is a very convenient bus service from Toronto Pearson and can drop you to any location you want in North Bay. Um, or if you want a flight, that's your choice. But I would suggest the bus service is very convenient because you will have luggage as well. Um, when you arrive at the airport, obviously there will be screening. Uh, you will be asked questions. Uh, you can be asked questions by the CBSA officer. Um, as I said before, um, all you need right now at the airport while you're being questioned is your confidence and about not getting confused and not getting panicked at the airport if you're being asked questions. So carry all your documents and be confident about what you're speaking. I think... Um, you will anyway get the signages at the airport or where to go for transfers if you're taking a flight. And when you're done with all the process of self-kiosk checking and everything, you actually go to the, your baggage. Um, sometimes, not always, there are officers who are standing around the baggage area as well who might ask you, uh, whether you're carrying anything specific in your uh, baggage which you have not declared. So that is not a moment to get panicked because many students, you know, get confused or they fear even if they're not carrying anything. Just be confident and be supportive in whatever they are trying to check and whatever they are trying to ask. <sighs> And this is the most important part, arriving too early and arriving late. We will not accept both of these. We suggest that you should not arrive two months in advance of your class start date if you have received study visa. Four weeks maximum is what we suggest. If your classes are starting in, let's say, first week of September, please don't come uh, before first week of August. That's what we suggest to all the students. If your classes are starting in first week of September, you should be there on the class start date. We do not appreciate students arriving late on campus. We also do not give exceptions to students who arrive late on campus, uh, expecting the professor or the program coordinator to accept you in the class. Uh, there have been cases in the past. I'm giving you an example. There were floods in a particular state in India uh, there were medical issues, and these are exceptional cases which will be looked into by international department, which will be looked into by the RO and the program coordinator. Otherwise, you have to be there on the first day of the class. And now it's to my colleague, Seni, to talk about living in Canada. Thank you so much, Sonia. Sonia, and thank you, Seni. Just before Seni continues, allow me to just mention something very briefly to our colleagues and our student learners today. Uh, many of you should have received communication from Canada College a few weeks ago. I just wanted to remind, if we could, uh, on behalf of the team, 
about that communication and note that there was some very relevant information, some of which we, which we have touched on today, for example, the matter of arriving late. There's also a specific element in there relative to housing. Uh, we recommend that you take a look at that, uh, please, uh, carefully and seriously. That communication was sent out, as I say, just a few weeks ago, and is a roughly a five-page document or so, and uh, has, some, has some good information. Just a reminder to, to continue looking at your emails and, and communications as we move forward, including the previous one that was just sent. Thank you. With that, we'll continue with Sunny. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amir, for highlight that. And hello, everybody. Once again, welcome to this session. Thank you for joining us. My name is Seni. I'm the International Student Services Coordinator, and it's an honor for me being here for, uh, with you. So as my colleagues already said, we have a lot of information. And my part is to talk a little bit about how to settle in, in Canada, how it looks once you are already here, and what to keep in mind. So the first thing that I would like to highlight is the culture shock. And, and it's very um, wise, be aware that it happens and it's 100% normal. Everybody left this. I used to be international student four years ago. I arrived in Canada and I do have it. So if someone say, oh no, I do not. Yes, because it's a different country, different culture, different belief. So you may be may pass through a adjusting and adaptable process, and that is called culture shock. So many students experience that feeling of loneliness, social isolation, and culture shock in the first few months. So it's not going to be a forever thing. It's, with the time, it's going to be better, and you're, you're going to be get to used to the country and all the benefits and good things here. As I say, 100% normal. Um, in the future, you will have fond memories of what happened at the beginning. I remember when I come first come to Canada as a newcomer, I lived this, this, that, but now I'm successing this, this, that. So just give it the time to uh, live the process. It's natural. So some information, just to just so you know, according to research, international students will experience a sort of roller coaster of emotions beginning with excitement, followed by culture shock and loneliness, and fi finally adjusting and adapting to your new surroundings. Everybody is different. Everybody leaves this stage in a different way. Uh, not, not every single person is the same. So it depends on, on your background, on your personality, et cetera. Uh, but there is something very important to know. It's not just like, it's, it's a bad thing and that's it, no. There are many services and resources available to support your well-being, to guarantee you that in this new process, you're not alone. You have a bunch of people, resources, and help that is there to support you and to help you inside the college, in the college, in campus, and off campus too. Um, so uh, some of the resources is on the left hand um, because the government support you too. We have a lot of resources from uh, the government and we have a lot of uh, workshops and seminars and supporting the college to help you. So living and attending a school abroad is a fantastic opportunity to experience, I can say that. Different culture, different experience, tradition, etc. Both the positive and the challengers are what makes this an adventure. So I don't say positive and negative because everything is a learning and we have to pass that process naturally. Uh, here, let's talk a little bit now about how is the accommodation in the city. So let's start here with the on-campus housing in North Bay. So we have an amazing, uh, buildings of residents. When you can be part, you can join us in the residence. So there is something important. It's very uh, appropriate for international students to 
um, have this option at the first one. But at the same time, you have to be aware that the wait list is, is long. It's, it's very demanding uh, to have a spot here. So you have to do it in advance and you should apply to residents. How to check this? Please go to the main website, Canada College, and you can just put in the loop in the search residents and you will have all the information in detail updated. Uh, there is a tour, you can see everything as you can see here in the picture. We have different type of option according to your preferences. So we have single places, we have two bedroom places, we have four bedroom places. Uh, it depends if you are coming alone or if you're coming with your family. So residence team will help you to just uh, give you the best option. There is the rate up to date, um, the services that include, everything is included, everything. All the utilities is all furnished, so you don't have to worry about buying whatever because it's already included. And the best part that not all colleges offer that is that you can cook. So there is a kitchen and there is uh, cooking available for you to prepare your delicious. Uh, okay, now what about the off-campus off housing? If you are not interested in in residence, or maybe you were not, there was full, there was not a spot for you. So do not panic. There are other options in the city, in the community. Uh, Norway has a high demand of housing. That's a reality. But if we just do all of this in advance and we prepare ourselves, we will have uh, an ideal home for us, for sure, depending on our presence. So where to go? If we are going to live in North Bay, Paris Sound, or Toronto, these are the options that we recommend off campus just to check some um, um, availabilities. The first one is places for students. Uh, this is the first one that we recommend is just for North Bay and Paris Sound. This is a good option because there are houses in the community, people from of the community that just register in this website that is uh, supported by the Canada College. So you're going to see uh, multiple options of houses available, just like Marketplace. That is the common one, right? Which is mentioned here too, Facebook Marketplace. Kijiji is a Canadian app when you can download and check all the housing options beyond others uh, availabilities too. And Rent Seeker. Something important to mention, please, please be very precaution and very aware that there are some scams, you know, so there is a link for you to be uh, mindful about that and just check how to avoid being a scam. So there are false people, but people that maybe can want to um, like, so try to avoid that. So a special note for uh, students that are attending in Paris Sounds, um, I'm not sure how many, but just in case. Uh, here in Paris Sound, we do not have residents there. So it's on your own to try to find an accommodation in advance. Um, and uh, we are really um, aware that our staff and colleagues in that campus will support you and help you to find a place. Also, you can in advance check all that uh, options, Facebook Marketplace to see uh, where to, to find it. Early communication is the clue, yes, to, to do it. <clears throat> Remember a final note, if your classes are in person or are hybrid, you have to be in the campus, you have to be in the city when your classes are uh, done, just do not affect, affect the progression of your academy plan, okay? So let's talk a little bit about worship. If you have a specific belief, we ha because we have multicultural people from different countries and different beliefs, uh, there is a. We just want to give you here a general um, information, not a specific one. Uh, these two links are for North Bay and Paris Sound, and here you can find all the options that you have available from different church churches and different religions, right? No matter which one there are all the options available, then you can have like an idea where to go, where to join for this purpose, okay? I'm just gonna give you a minute if you wanna take a picture or take notes.
So there are two important things that we should do as soon as we arrive to Canada. The first one is getting a plan. We need a cell phone, we need communication, right? And the other one is bank. We need a bank account. So for the first one, there are many options available in the city. Fido, Kuru, Virgin, Rogers. It depends on your preferences, what you want. I took Bell when I arrived, right? But it depends on you. So they have many like international talk time deals friendly for us when we arrive. Um, something important is to bring your passport because they would ask you like a photo ID proof. Um, just that. Um, yeah, it depends on you. And about the bank. So our currency here is Canadian dollar, as you may know already. Um, you can exchange if you're coming with your own currency, you can exchange that here in the airport or some places. Uh, we recommend you to bring at least 200 ca um, sorry, Canadian dollars, just in case you need something at the beginning. And there are some uh, example of banks that are available here. Which one is better, which one is not, we cannot say that. You know, it's, it just depends on your own preferences. We just recommend you to visit some of them and just take a decision. All of them offer friendly, like a student-friendly options bank account. And if you're coming with your partner, you can combine accounts too. So that's a good option. Well, cooking in Canada, and this is something that Sonia already talked about this. Uh, we have multiple options here. If you are going to GTA, there is everything. So there is no problem. It's like being in your own country. If you are coming to the North, Paris Sound or North Bay, it's more limited, but we have everything we need to, especially for South Asian. Uh, we have a new store called Spices Village when you can find everything related to India. We have these four stores, Bull Bar, Walmart, North Fritz and Fresco, give you option for your own country. So yeah, you can, you can find yeah, your own ingredients. So now let's talk a little bit about the um, driving license, if you are interested in this topic. Canada has a regulation or a graduate license system that all newcomers has to follow. There is no option. So if you are ready, and I'm going to show all the presentation just to, just to see the difference. If you are or if you already uh, drive back home and you have your license, and just you can see in your left hand, uh, uh, it's going to be easier for you because they just ask you an extract of your license, uh, driver license back home. And you just have to give this support in French or English, uh, a letter uh, no more than six months, and um, provide the following information that you see there. So the expired days of your license, class of license, and all that. And they will give you like a match of the license. Maybe you need a test just to get the, the full one, maybe not. It depends on your records. But in the left hand, sorry, the, the previous one was the right. The left hand, when there is the pictures, that is for people who has to start from the beginning. So the beginning is longer. If you have never drive before, then you have to go to all these steps. So the first license is G1. You have to present a theoric test, knowledge test, and if you approve, if you pass that test, then you are available to present the G2 just to start driving. Uh, between the G1 and the G2, you have to wait for one year if you haven't drive before. So it's a long process. And then at the end, you can apply for the full G just to have all the availability in all the highways and everything, no limitation. But this is how it works. And it's good that it's like this because remember that here we have to drive in ice, in the snow. So it's not that easy. Um, so what about buses? I'm not interested in a car. I don't have a car. I'm not planning to buy a car. So we have a very good transportation system in North Bay. So no worries about that. Um, we have our buses, public buses. And the good thing is that in your ancillary fees, uh, when you pay your semester, the bus pass is included there. So you're gonna have your ID card with the um, possibility to just take the bus here and there. Uh, I cannot say by free, but yeah, it looks like by free because it's already in your ID card, it's already paid there. 
Um, the system is very good. Every 15 minutes, you can find a bus in the campus just to go wherever you want in the city. But also, if you don't want to take the bus or you need to take a taxi, we have taxi options. I add there, I don't know if you can see that, I add there the, um, oh, can you see that, right? The two options that we have, so it's taxi 50 and you need a cab, that's the, the phone numbers. You can bike in, you can use, you ride to, you ride is like the Uber. Another option the city has, what I found really fancy and good, is that you can request a like a you can request a service. So you can book a trip, you know, by yourself. It's a limited hours, especially during the nights and weekends. But you can request a bus, and you just go to the, that bus stop, and it's like a Uber. So it's a good service that that we have to. There are the scan code if you want to check all the routes that we have in North Bay please the left hand, you can scan that. So transportation in Paris Sound is a little bit different. The city is smaller, so we don't have a subway or that uh, buses transportation, but you can walk, you can bike, you can use taxi too. Uh, it depends on your preferences. Talking about Toronto, maybe I don't have to just stand too much here. Toronto has everything you need. Taxi, buy, you ride, you Uber, subway, and everything is available for you the whole day. As you can see in the time from 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 1.30 a.m., um, even on weekends too, that late. So everything is available. You just have to organize yourself and say, um, what you want, a monthly pass, a weekly pass, or just pay by day. Same thing, you can walk, you can bike. And that's it on my side. Thank you so much for, for, your, for your time. I hope you take a lot of notes and now I pass the next information to Sonia Takar again. Thank you, Sunny. A lot of wonderful information shared. Um, we are coming to almost towards the last section of uh, the presentation and uh, probably an important one as well, because only when you register, you're able to start classes at Canador. Um, we have already started receiving emails from students who have already received study visa about registration. And I know that you're eager to register. Uh, but as per what the information I have, uh, we will take about time till first week of August to start registration, uh, first to second week. So you will have to have a bit of patience. If you have received your study visa, it's good. I would suggest use that time for your self-improvement, reading uh, and developing skills because that's what matters. Um, but the registration will take time because we are on 7th July and you might have to wait for three more weeks. Um, and the registration details will be sent to all the students on their registered email ID, which is mentioned in the application details. So once you uh, kind of registered, you get access to your self-service account. We also get emails from students. We don't ha have access to the account. You will not have access because the registration has not started. And that will happen only after registration, for which you have to wait for at least three weeks. Hence, since we have shared that information, uh, it will be helpful if uh, we don't receive emails about that. Uh, because it will help us kind of uh, cater to the emails which are important right now. We also kind of want to mention about the OCAS portal, which is very important. All your application process has happened through the OCAS portal. You actually receive notifications when you receive an offer letter or if any document is pending, everything these kind of application related information are sent through OCAS, but it is also important once you receive your study visa to upload it, if you are applying directly, to upload it directly on the OCAS portal in your account. And if you're using the services of an agency, 
they must upload your study visa on OCAS portal so that your application status changes to pre-registered on OCAS. It is very important that the study visa is uploaded so that Canada College gets an indication that you will be coming to study and kind of your seat is reserved. But that happens only in registration. Pre-registration is the first step for which you have to upload the study visa copy on OCAS. We want all of you to be there on the campus that you receive your study visa, but if by luck or if by any other reason you don't receive study visa, we have a very well-defined process of withdrawals and refunds. Uh, we kind of want to mention the difference between the two. Um, if you have received a study visa refusal, the student applies for a refund. And in that case, uh, just 300 Canadian dollars of admin charge is deducted and rest of the tuition fee is returned to the student's account. In this exchange of returning, there might be a certain difference in the amount that you get, which is not uh, because of any extra amount being kept at Canada. It is purely because of exchange rate difference. We do get a lot of emails from students that we have received less money. Sometimes a cup we have do receive. It's always because of exchange rate difference. We only deduct 300 Canadian dollars admin fee for visa refusal. If you want to withdraw, if that's your choice, if you want to withdraw, uh, that must be within first 10 days of class start. And in that case, only 2,400 Canadian dollars will be deducted from your tuition and rest will be returned to the student. However, if you register and then you withdraw after the 10 day count, then nothing of that semester will be returned to you. So it is very essential that you keep that in mind. Uh, withdrawing within the first 10 days will make you save money if that's what your plan is. However, we would not want you to withdraw. Um, Seni, I was just looking at the deferral slide. Is it later or have I missed? Okay, this was, so um, it's also important to mention about defer here. Um, if you have not received your study visa or if due to any other reason, you cannot join fall 2023, then the last date to defer is 1st September, 2023. Uh, any deferral post 1st September 2023 will not be considered. In those cases, students have to reapply. You must also note that Canada College allows only one deferral. We call it as one free deferral. If you're deferring for the second or the third time, we that will happen only when your current application is closed and you will have to reapply to Canada because only one deferral is possible. And I also suggest that students must make a note of last date to defer, which is 1st September 2023. And it is also essential that you do not register and defer both. It will create a lot of confusion in your account. So there are students who register and then they defer. And if you're deferring, then you must withdraw your registration because what will happen if you have registered for, for Canada or in our accounts, you are a registered student, even if you're not attending classes. And there have been students who have lost one semester tuition because of that mistake. So I suggest that do not be in a hurry and do not do both these things. And if you have by mistake done it, it is your duty to withdraw your registration if you're deferring. So request you to please keep that in mind. Uh, we'll quickly come to the IT policy, which is bring your own device. Uh, you're suggested to bring your own laptop wherever it is needed. Um, we always, I mean, it is completely your choice. You can, if you have a laptop in your home country, you can bring that. However, if you're planning to buy a new laptop, it is suggested that you buy it from Canada uh, rather than buying in your home country and that, then carrying it. It is suggested that you buy 
make sure that if you're getting from your home country, it has uh, the internet browsers, it has the required software so that you don't face any issues. Um, this is an essential important thing, which is scholarship and bursaries. Uh, if you uh, want to click a picture, you can. The scholarships are open between November 1 and December 15 each year and you have to apply. And if you're eligible, you meet the criteria, you get it. And similarly, bursaries uh, are open uh, between October 1 and October, to October 31st each year. Again, you have to apply on the basis of your academic progress or financial need, it is evaluated and then given. Um, so it is essential. I understand students would kind of love scholarships and bursaries, but you have to apply for it and you have to be eligible for that. Uh, Part-time uh, uh, employment, uh, most of the students kind of look for, but you should always keep in mind that you're coming to Canada to study and uh, doing your program, doing your assignments, attending classes should be your priority. However, if you want to work part-time, which you can, which is mentioned on your study permit as well, uh, if you're eligible to work, uh, part-time, you need SIN number, which you get it from Service Canada. It's a nine-digit social insurance number. Um, it's a very private thing, and you should not kind of share it with anyone. Um, and also, you're responsible of keeping your SIN number private to you only. So it's your responsibility. Um, students can kind of work off campus. If you get an opportunity to work on campus, well and good, but both the options are available if there is an on-campus opportunity. Um, once you register, then only you get access to the schedule, the class schedule. And without that, you don't have, again, we get emails from students. I don't have access to the class schedule. That will only happen when you register. And also we get emails from students. Can I change my classes? Is it possible to do that? No, it's not possible to do that. Whatever class schedule you get, you have to follow that. Um, this uh, kind of brings uh, to the end of this session. I want to again emphasize to all the students that wait for the registration details to be emailed to your inbox. Uh, keep a check of your inbox in first week of August and keep checking your spam or junk. Sometimes emails go in that rather than emailing that you have not received. Also, keep in mind the last date to defer and do not register and defer both. And if you do, please withdraw from the program. Um, Seni, over to you. Sure. Thank you so much, Sonia, for that clarification. Um, yeah, of course, we have a Kahoot ready for you just to refresh all the information that we have uh, talked today already. Um, uh, we just wanna like remind you and see how competitive you are. So if you are not ready, please take your phone and let's just scan the, the code that I'm gonna show you. Before that, I just wanna clarify too that we just sent the main email uh, just to contact us, reach reaching us. If you have further doubts, questions, or anything that comes to your mind that you need to clarify, please feel free to email us, international at canadorcollege.ca. Join us in this session. I think it has been very valuable for you, a lot of information. So me and my team, we are really, really happy for being here with you. Remember, please, if you have any question, more doubts, further doubts, contact us in international at canadorcollege.ca. Thank you for being today with us and have a rest of the week. Very, very good one. Bye.